This is the newest alert from Steve Quell's site. Yesterday, I was at a small meeting, eight of us, discussing several things, and the lieutenant colonel who heads our unit, who just returned from a meeting at a different base. As the meeting was closing, he got sidetracked and mentioned that how military health care is delivered is changing. That in the event of a war with Russia or Iran, since we do not have air superiority anymore, we would need to do temporary internments. This most definitely was a shock to hear that they are talking about this in the Army now. It's interesting that he concluded that one, we do not have air superiority. Two, we now need to change how we practice medicine, i.e. no more golden hour with rapid air evacuation, that we will now treat injuries near the battle or move by ground transport. Three, we would need to do temporary internments, actually bury our soldiers in temporary graves. Furthermore, mentioned Russia and Iran as the possible countries to be involved in war. Now, Steve Quayle also adds on here, all the words of real prophecy are stating that God will not fight for America as he has in the past. The Democrats and the Republican cohorts have made war on God as this once great nation has laid the groundwork for our own destruction. The Sentinels, God's protective angels, have all stood down, repent, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus will never turn down an honest heart who seeks him. Okay, so I wanted to address a couple of things to maybe clear it up because I can't assume that everyone knows what air superiority means, all right? So since Vietnam, okay, we've had the air superiority. We've been able to fly our helicopters and jets unabated other than some small uh, surface-to-air missiles uh, and anti-aircraft installations that we would have sometimes. But normally those would be targeted pretty fast and eliminate that. So once you have air superiority, uh, you can control a lot of different aspects of it. So we can go over here to a site that I looked up for you. And I want to read this to you. This is, uh, it says, air superiority, the concept. Air superiority is a necessity. Since the German attack in, on Poland in 1939, no country has won a war in the face of enemy air superiority. No major offensive has succeeded against an opponent who controlled the air. And no defense has sustained itself against an enemy who had air superiority. Conversely, no state has lost a war while it maintained air superiority. An attainment of air superiority consistently has been a prelude to military victory. It is vital that national and theater commanders, their air component commanders, and their surface component commanders be aware of these historical facts and plan accordingly. Furthermore, to be superior in the air, to have air superiority, means having sufficient control of the air to make air attacks on the enemy without serious opposition, and on the other hand, to be free from the danger of serious enemy air incursions. Of course, variations exist within the category of air superiority. So another item that we talked about here on this was the we now need to change the practice how we practice medicine no more golden hour with rapid air evacuation now if you can think back on what the golden hour is that's where uh, we first initially started doing this stuff in vietnam where we would fly in with the helicopter and they would land and you would load them up on there and then you take them over to uh the hospital right and that's continued on through today because understand that as a fighting man, as a, in a fighting force, if one of the things that kind of drives you, why medicine, why field med uh, battle medicine has increased over the years, is because see, if you know that your people are going to put you back together again, you'll fight harder. You'll have less fear. But when you not, you know that uh, you're not going to be able to get patched up. And all that, you're you know you're gonna be more careful. You just will because you just don't have that peace of mind in the back of your head.
See, the article also warns here that so we would need to do temporary internments, actually bury our soldiers in temporary graves, okay? And so all this stuff, we're looking at these field hospitals that you remember from back in the day. Uh, if you remember that funny show that was MASH where they had Klinger and all those guys, well, that's what they were. That was in the Korean War. And so what they would do there, if you can remember... They would put the stretchers on those vehicles and stuff, and they were walking and, and all that kind of stuff, and they were trying to transport them. And the, even then, they did some helicopter fly-ins during that time. They had been experimenting with it. So, you know, the key is to get our people to treatment fast in that golden hour because uh, after that, your body, you just deteriorate uh, so quickly. So these injuries that they receive, these battlefield injuries, I mean, there's a lot of moving lead out there. There's a lot of fragmentation and and there's a lot of ways to die or to get, uh, and dying is not necessarily the worst thing that could, that could happen. You could get your, uh, legs blown off, uh, you know, your knee shot, you know, uh, uh, sucking chest wound. There's all different types of injuries that you could sustain in a combat situation. Ain't none of them good. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. So the internment uh, hospitals, these are the mass units here that are set up there. So once they fly them in, then they would be in these areas like this. Overall, folks, the bottom line of this article sets it all up. God has lifted his protective hand from America and is allowing this to happen because America, we won't repent. We won't stop abortion. We won't stop same-sex marriage. We won't stop the idolatry that is occurring in this country. And we need to get on our knees, humble ourselves, and cry out to the Lord for forgiveness.